How's it going guys? Anxious Cynic back again with another Minimator tutorial. So a few of you have asked me about transitions. What do they do? How do you use them? Things like that. So I figured I'd go ahead and try to cover that for some of you guys so you can more effectively use transitions to make your animations all the better. Another thing is people ask me how do I get in and out on the timeline here and uh, that's just by using the scroll wheel on my mouse when you select the timeline you can scroll in and scroll out to expand it some of you are using laptops and uh, i really recommend you get a mouse instead of trying to use a touchpad or something all right so now we've got our cube and uh, it's just a black cube on a white background as you can see and uh, it looks a little better if i turn on shading but sometimes it gives me problems with my cursor but i'll try to keep it on so this looks a little more obvious all right, so let's go ahead and just take our cube and move it over here. All right, and uh, let's try to center up our screen a little bit. So if you watch this, all that happens here is our cube just goes over and stops. It's pretty basic movement, nothing special going on there. And that is because this keyframe, the very first one that starts the movement, its transition is linear and that's just represented as a straight line because that's exactly how it moves. It moves as a straight line. So if I do that, then it just goes and that's it. So the first principle of understanding keyframes is most of these, not exactly all, and we'll get to that in a moment, but most of these are an example of time, basically. Uh, what you need to understand is that this curve represents how an object will move in time, not necessarily how it physically moves like other ones might actually do. So with it straight like this, then that means it's just going to move linearly, such as the name linear. If I put it on instant, then that means it will only move instantaneously between keyframes. So there you go with that. That's pretty simple. As you can see, this is a straight line like a corner, and what that means is that there's no movement until it gets to that corner and then it's straight up to the top. So if you look at this square, I don't know if, how well you guys can see that, but it's kind of like if you imagine this as a graph and at the very bottom, there's no movement and at the top, there's the maximum amount of movement. Uh, if that makes any sense, there's probably a better way to explain it, but that's basically it. So as you can see here, it doesn't move at all until it gets to that line and then that's a straight up line. So the tip top of that would be the maximum amount of movement, meaning it goes exactly where this keyframe is at that exact time. So if I go here, you have a few different options. So you basically have three different types of uh, transitions, which is ease in, which is this one that curves upward. And then you have ease out, which is a curve that kind of goes inward, if, if that makes any sense. Like it kind of goes and it curves more towards the end. This one curves more towards the beginning. And uh, that obviously represents how it will move at the beginning or at the end of the movement. And then you have one that's a combination of the two and these are called ease in and ease out. And then you have different variations of these. As you can see, these are called quadratic. And then you have cubic. You have, uh, I think quart may mean quadratic or actually it may mean uh, its own thing like quarters or something like that. And then you have quint. Uh, the names really aren't that important. You just kind of have to eyeball it. Like once you understand what these lines are representing, then you can use that to determine how the movement's going to be. So if I just move on to this one, then you'll notice when I play the cube, it slowly starts and then it gets faster as it goes until it gets to the final destination. If I switch it to the ease out, then that means it'll immediately start and then slow down when it get, once it gets to its final destination. And then you have the ease in, ease out. And what this does is combine both of those together. So it starts slowly and then ends slowly. And you can see it kind of ramps up where the speed in the middle is uh, kind of faster. So in certain movements, you may uh, want to have the keyframe go out a little bit farther so that that ramping isn't quite as noticeable. So it really depends on what kind of transition you're using. As you can see there, the, the little speed ramp that happens in the middle of the motion is much less obvious. And it starts out slow, and then it goes in slow. Uh, this type of transition is commonly used, I think, for the arms when you're doing a walk cycle. Uh, so Because the arms kind of, you want to show inertia, so you want them to kind of like start going slowly, and then in slowly, and then you would have the reverse motion back. So if I copy this keyframe and paste it, about an even amount here. So 
every 50 frames. Well, actually, I have to set that transition. <laughs> oh my goodness, there we go. Here we go. Start slowly, in slowly, start slowly, in slowly. So that way you get this kind of very smooth motion uh, between those keyframes. So you have to remember that like uh, whatever your keyframe transition is when you create a new one. So this one is set to ease in, ease out. When I create a new transition, I mean a new keyframe, then this is gonna inherit the same transition. So you need to remember that if you're trying to make movements and things aren't looking right, make sure you check your transitions for each keyframe and uh, you may have to change it if you need them to move to different ones in between. So those are the basic three. Uh, there's also the ability to kind of combine these if you need to do something a little bit different. So let's say for instance, I wanna move this cube and I want it to go about halfway and then stop and then kind of pause for a moment and then start again. So what I could do is place a keyframe here in the middle and then I can duplicate this keyframe by right clicking and copying while it's highlighted and paste. And I'm just gonna have it stop for about five seconds here and then start going again. Uh, and what you get though, with these ease in and ease out is it kind of lurches up, slows down, slows you know the in and out slowly again and again. So what we may want though, is like, let's say we want this to kind of happen to uh, happen a little more linearly. So instead I'm gonna make this one an ease in on the very first one. And then here I'm gonna make, when it goes to move out again, I'm going to make this one an ease out. So then what you get is a very sharp movement. Like it stops suddenly and then it starts going suddenly and then it, it ends. So like in a way, what you're getting when you combine these keyframes like that is that ease in, ease out, but without the motion in between. Like this isn't gonna slow down to a stop and this one isn't gonna slowly start. You just get the slowly starting and then the slowly ending. Uh, this isn't really the best example, but that's an example of how you can kind of customize your keyframes and use transitions to combine movements to get the results that you want. All right, so then you have the more exaggerated forms of these, for instance, like you have these with the, the long lines at the beginning or the ends here. And basically all that does is means that it's gonna hold longer. So for instance, if I use this ease out exponential, then it's gonna like, <laughs> I can't even get the word out before it finishes. It's gonna start really quickly and then zoom over and have kind of a linear movement towards the end where it's kind of flatlining. Uh, so really, you know, there's not much of a science to this in my opinion. You know, some people may have it kind of nailed down of what they use, when and where. For me, I just kind of use the transitions that I think would uh, look right and I just kind of flip between them until I get the movement that I want. So you can just click through any of these and just watch what the result is, as you, as you can tell though, if I could talk today, is I'm not doing anything with the keyframes, but the movements become drastically different. With this one, this ease in circular, it starts out very slowly and then basically jumps to the end. And if I reverse that to the ease out circular, it should go immediately and then slow down a lot. So uh, yeah, it really just depends on what kind of movement you want to have. So those are the pretty much the basics of like how transitions move in time, but then you have some of these that actually kind of control the movement of the item and that pretty much starts with these down here. So you basically have three different other types of transitions. You have elastic, you have back, and then you have bounce. And these actually kind of control the movement more so than the timing. It does affect the timing, uh, but it also affects the movement as well. So if I had this ease in elastic, then you see like the, the cube kind of does this weird revving up and getting ready to go kind of a thing. If I turn it to ease out elastic, then you get this nice bounce. Uh, so that can kind of be used uh, more or less. I generally would use that if something is going to stop in a cartoonish way or like if you're having something expand suddenly then you can kind of have it expand and kind of bounce into position or whatever uh, and then you have this one here which basically is like the ease in ease out but of the elastics so what you get with this one is this kind of revy movement and then another revy movement uh elastic movement i guess i should be saying uh at the beginning and at the end so you know, it really depends on what your scene is and what you're trying to animate as to whether or not any of these will work for you. One of these, or actually a couple of these transitions I've kind of shown 
quite a bit in some of my other tutorials and I've used them in my animations that give you really quick and easy results when you're doing uh, motions that require a slight moving forward or backwards at the beginning or the end of a transition or at the end of a movement. So if I click this one, then you'll notice it kind of revs up and goes back and then over and out, right? So uh, that can be good for like kind of a uh, an inertia kind of moment when a character is kind of like reaching his arm back to swing and he kind of goes back a little bit to get that momentum going. And then when he is moving to the final motion, when is like say if you're swinging a pickaxe or maybe even a sword, then you can use this ease out back so it goes over and kind of bounces back. Obviously you would want that to be a little quicker maybe and then you would get this kind of motion like there's some inertia and then he puts it back to where he was intending for it to go if that makes sense uh, i'm not very really doing a very good job of explaining these but hopefully you get the idea uh, and then you have the bounces so with this one you kind of have a bounce like something is getting started or something uh, i don't know if i really use this one that much generally it would be the ease out bounce because if you have something falling, so let's see if we can uh, get rid of this keyframe and let's uh, take our cube here, raise it up just a bit. And then on this keyframe, we will have it come back out. And then when we have this ease out bounce transition, you get a nice bouncy effect. It happens, you see that? And you don't have to sit there and animate all these keyframes to do a simple motion like that. You can just use that transition. And then, of course, you have this one, which is kind of fun to use sometimes. Ease in and ease out bounce. So all of these are a combination of the ease out, the ease in and ease out, and then the ease out or in uh, transition. So each one is its own style of keyframe transition, but they all pretty much have the same basic three options with uh, some variations on some other ones. So it's all pretty intuitive. You just got to play with it and see. But this one obviously has a lot going on. So it kind of does a lot of this weirdness. Uh, this is honestly something I would use. I generally actually do use it more for like say a creeper exploding. So what you can do for instance is uh, on this keyframe we want the scale to go up. Like imagine this is a creeper and he's gonna blow up so you know how they kind of expand and flash colors and whatnot. Well, with this, I can just have these two keyframes without having to animate that whole thing, and it kind of is like, and then the creeper would blow up or something. So, uh, yeah, I recommend, you know, highly playing with all these transitions. I wouldn't rely on them entirely. Sometimes you can kind of get better results with linear transitions if you can animate it properly. But the transitions here definitely give you a lot to uh, work with and help to make your animation smoother and better. And just overall, like it makes it quicker to achieve certain results that you don't necessarily have to go through all the trouble of uh, going through trying to make linear transitions with all keyframes to get those basic little movements, such as the bounce. Like that. Alright, so I hope that was helpful guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. Share it with your friends and your family and your pets. And I will see you in the next video.